every single click is where I show 99.90% .90 of the clicks in a Hearts of Iron 4 game in order you can follow along at home and particularly just play how I play and have the exact same build. I'm going to play as the United Kingdom, my home today. And I'll be honest, I have a soft spot for the United Kingdom. Not because I just live there. It's because it's an island. You're away from everyone else. And you can kind of just do as whatever you please. And you've practically got unlimited resources. It's pretty OP. However, it's quite difficult to micromanage due to the fact you've got so many international holdings, colonial puppets, stuff going on around the world. The sun never sets on the British Empire. The predictable build will be to spam air as Britain. And to be fair, there's lots of incentive to do that. As you look down this path, cheaper planes, bonuses for planes, 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 and also kind of special forces too. So what we're going to try and do is ignore planes for a second, just for something a little bit different, and focus on making like a really heavy hard tank, and then try and mix it up and maybe introduce in some special forces as well. Why not both? First of all, you always do limited rearmament. Factories early on usually is a big win. Next up, shift left click on assigned divisions. We're going to go V and left click on area defense to move them all here. Convert them all to the colonial garrison. Also go into occupied territories. Change to local autonomy, which gives you the most compliance, which will give you the most manpower. And also make sure you're on colonial garrison and high priority. Yes. Research wise. So we're going to go for tanks. So we're going to need the heavy. We're also going to, of course, work on our basic industry and the construction. Same old start to every Hoi 4 game. And we'll add on the armor to the tank. Yep. And we're going to go for the infantry tank, which is kind of the heavy tank. Yeah. Even though probably the medium tank designer has many more overall well-rounded buffs. But they're only for medium tanks and we're doing heavies because we want to try and maximize hardness. So what is hardness in Hearts of Iron 4? It's a way of ignoring soft attack. You know I talk about soft attack is king? Well, hard attack is also king if you're attacking a hard division. I'll explain more about it when I design the division. But anyway, we're not actually doing the Vickers. We're actually going to do the Vauxhall, which is an infantry tank. So heavy and medium. Alrighty then. We'll start off by making... You know what? Actually, um, I usually make a few mills early on. But you know what I'm going to do? It just makes sieves from the beginning. I don't think we need mills from the get-go. We're not going to need artillery, but we will need a little bit of anti-air. We're not going to need those tanks. And do you know what? I normally just build the remaining ships, the ones that are partially constructed. But do you know what? Today, I just don't care. And we'll make a bunch of convoys. And then we'll just sell all the convoys on the market. And we'll sell them dirty cheap just to get them off. This will give us a construction bonus. And it'll be worth it in the long run. 700, low price, massive sale. Black Friday, sell, sell, sell. Military factories, so we need trucks. So I'm going to shift left click, which brings the new assembly line to the top. And do three trucks. Shift left click again, one onto trains. I think that's good for now. Maybe one more to support equipment, and then the rest goes into guns. Yeah, that's perfect. And also, this doesn't have a Mayo assigned, so we'll assign Vauxhall again. Is it Vauxhall for the tank? Am I going mad? It is. Oh, okay. Vauxhall make trucks as well as tanks. I know someone in the comments is going to tell me, oh, but Dave, it's so obvious. Hey, I listen, I know that. My first car was a Vauxhall, okay? Very British of me. Anyway, five speed, off we go. Same again. Shift left click on the fleets. Right click. Enter to confirm, click here, press G, and merge up all the fleets. Same with the Air Force 2, you got F3, and then you can shift left click through each of the air wings. Be aware, some of these are attached onto carriers, so you probably don't want these ones, so I'm just going to shift left click the ones that are on carriers. Oh, I didn't actually know that. If you shift click at the top, it deselects all of them. Do you know, I didn't even know that. F to the king, and look at all these sales. Oh, Black Friday is here, boys. Buy those convoys. And that gives us a massive influx of... My own money, which is economic capacity surplus, which just translates to construction bonus. Yes, I did think it made sieves because I thought this icon looked like a sieve, so I thought you were getting sieves. But overall, no, it's just a construction bonus. And it's really hard to see how much of a construction bonus you do get. No, I can't even see it. It's one of those numbers that I think Paradox had the right idea with. And I think it's a real cool concept, but it's really difficult to actually dig into the tooltips to actually see what it's doing. Okay, we're going to exercise our boils to level three and just see how much xp that gives us we do need a bit of army xp so to get that early on is going to be really useful okay so you see that all the purchases are going through and we have to manually accept them but that's really tedious clicking so just go into here and click auto accept and then they'll automatically accept all new purchases from the market all right at this point i don't usually do this but what I'm going to do is not actually select a focus and the bonus of that is you gain an extra plus one political power per day if you don't select a focus. See, 1.99 is practically two. 
and we're losing a little bit because we selected the Mayo. This is useful because that means we get to assign our army guy, Liriana. We're going to go for the army offense. Hands down, this guy is the best because he uses less command power and also he gives more ticking XP. But in all offense, we don't need speed. Do we focus on speed? Heavy tank speed? Uh, do I don't want to do that. Really don't want to. And double political power is really painful. No, I'm going to do it. It's a bit of a balancing act, this, because you need command power, which you use to send attaches, but you're going to have a limited amount of it because you're assigning one of your uh, chief of the armies. But there's also this you can go for, which gives more command power. So once again, as I said, I mentioned to you before, this is a bit of a balancing act. You'll need a bit of one, a bit of advice, back and forth. It'll make sense as I go out. Once again, I'm not very good at explaining things, but if I show you it visually and hold your hand through experience, I feel that's easier. All right, next up, we are going to go for Steady As She Goes, which gives you ticking stability. Getting your stability up as Britain is fairly simple. It's definitely not like Britain in the real world. Stable politics in Britain? When I go into decisions here, I hate seeing this. So I just usually click these away because usually you'll never even be involved in them. This is a really cool song concept, Gateway to Europe for the Netherlands. But if you're on historical, they always side with the Brits. So it's kind of just pointless. Like, it'd be nice if on historical, if Germans invested into the Netherlands, they would join the Netherlands, but they never do. So it is kind of pointless. Supporting China is also kind of pointless one. Why would you ever cut off your resources to China? I guess if you wanted to RP that the British hate the Chinese. Is this something that you RP on a regular basis? Hong Kong, British forever, maybe? Oh God, controversial. I've been demonetized. Okay, next up, we are going to go for motorized army. Don't usually do this. The reason we're doing it is it allows us to go for mechanized, which mechanized have lots and lots of hardness. You will see very shortly. Disperse industry for the win. I've played Britain so many times, I feel like I min-max it quite. So I'm really confident with quite a lot of my clicks with this. Basic engine is required, and we've also got the medium chassis. We're going to need more artillery, though. So artillery designer. And random fact, I'm not sure if I just said this. Maybe I'm saying this twice, but Britain's only the only nation that starts off with radio and radar one wow britain at its peak technologically advanced so not like real life anyway this one gives heavy tank bonuses it also gives you spg bonuses for heavies tank destroyer bonuses for heavies and also aa for heavies so we'll do that one then we're going to take advantage of some of the other bonuses so this one this one and then heavy tank production this one what i'm doing is shift left clicking so i don't have to keep assigning the the myo points which a lot of people get upset with because it's kind of excessive just pick the ones you generally want. Like for instance, these ones at the bottom are very strong. Extra production as well as armor and defense. And just roughly pick the ones you want and then just forget about it. You can see working on construction, production efficiency cap, and also the artillery. Motorized army is ready now. So I need to complete this one because we need this gun, the close support gun. The one time we don't have any another alternative research. And also, we need the tank as well. Oh my goodness, there's so many things we need. It's usually the reason why I don't invest so heavily into tanks, because I feel like it really saps up your research. Anywho, Spirit of the Army, Officer Corps, Professional Officer Corps, gives extra ticking command power, and therefore we can get 50 command power, send an attache to Spain, and then mobilize earlier than ever before. So if you're not keeping track at home, what we're trying to do is get partial mob to really give our industry a massive kickstart, but we need war support for that, and you gain 5% war support from setting attache, and you also get an extra 5% for home defense as well, which, which gives you over 25%, which allows you to partial mob. And we'll also go for the silent workhorse too, which pays back at least two years for political power gains. And then loads of political power in the long run. The democracies in Hoi 4 desperately need political power. It's a really cool game mechanic, I think. Like the idea that democracies have got many different hurdles to jump over to fix their problems. However, the, the totalitarian dictatorships obviously have totalitarian control so they don't have to deal with ship like that so artificially the allies are held back royal tank regiment is ready so we just need free research slot now and then we can start progressing down the research that we need the most we'll do home defense in the meantime which gives the extra five percent war support i said to you before democracy's early game the allies tend to struggle with political power particularly france and the united states and to a certain degree also the uk and one of the other issues you run into is you send a light war support. Funny, democracy is not really into war. Surprise, surprise. And because of that, you will tend to find that you want to rush war support as much as possible and min-max it. And that's kind of what we're doing right now. All right, so we can send improved relations to the Republicans. The minute we get enough relations, pop. There we go. Now we have 27 war support. And we can pass from mobile when we've got the political power. Now we can start rushing the mechanized. It's way ahead of time, but we need this. This has massive amounts of hardness. 60% hardness versus a motorized, which has 10%. Once again, we're stacking hardness. It'll make sense when I make the division. It's coming, boys. I, trust me on this one. Trust me. 
Same again with the Myos. So we're just going to basically stack all the ones. So this one's going to give production bonuses. This one gives soft attack. Uh, this one gives breakthrough. Reliability. You kind of see what I'm doing with this. Just stacking all the ones in advance. So when Rhineland has been militarized and the Spanish Civil War kicks off, you get a little bit of world tension, which should allow you to sneak down the Shadow Scheme. First, we need the previous focus to complete. Yep, that's done. Shadow Scheme. And now we just need to wait before we can mobilize. I'm going to be honest with you. This is not as min-max as I would have liked. I think I was a little bit slow on this. So you could probably do this just a little bit better than me. I know you can. I believe in you. Okay, so we're going to focus a little bit on mills now. So I'm going to shove that to the top. Finish the ones that are partially constructed. And then focus on making some mills. Just a handful. Not many. Not many. Just a handful. Oop. Oop. There we go. And then we can partially mobilize. Which if you look closely, we have 30 sieves that we're using. If we go for this now, we have 35. Extra five civvies. That's massive for the economy. And it also gives a massive hefty construction bonus for mills. So an extra 10% construction bonus compared to civilian economy, which is a minus 40. You take into account an extra 10%. Are you with me on the maths here? Okay, I'm also going to exercise my fleet because why not? I don't know. I always forget to do this. So exercise by holding shift left click. Click the air force. Shift left click. And we're exercising the planes as well. People always forget to do that. We've got loads of oil right now. So that'll do for now. Oh, I've also got the fleet planes at home. G to merge. Shift left click, exercise the planes. We don't run out of fuel really quickly here. Boom. All right. Ahead of time, the heavy tank, 600 days. That's so chunk, but it is what it is. Now we can start working on the chassis. So don't worry about the turret. We are going to go for the close support gun, which has the most amount of soft attack. I don't like close support gun. It's just not very cost effective. However, in this instance, we're trying to stack soft attack. So that is a win. Now we add on a crap ton of machine guns heavy machine gun turret heavy machine gun turret you get the idea you get the idea add the maya which gives soft attack hardness and armor go for the one that gives additional reliability most reliability needs to be high at least 90 percent plus if it's the main part of the division which it is going to be then we're going to add armor on until it basically can't move once again this is a tank that has lots of stats lots of firepower but it is unbelievably slow how british of me and to top that off as well, because we're Britain, we've got access to lots of chromium. We can do this. Welded armor now costs one chromium. You go here and you can see we're getting loads of chromium from the middle one. Can you see that? Betcha Banana Land and Zambia. Can't wait to can't wait to read the comments on this video. All right, is that good? I think that's good. I'm also tempted to go torsion bar to max that reliability. So just a heads up, there's no point going over 100% reliability. There's no point. And because it's an average based on the amount of uh, troops inside of the division, it's a good idea to get a high amount of reliability because it makes up the average of the total amount of equipment that's a part of that division. Also, having high reliability means that if a piece of equipment breaks down, there's a chance of repairing it. So a very reliable tank, therefore, can be recovered. If you look here, see recovered. See this one here, recovered. So if it has high reliability, they can patch it up, fix it, and send it back into the battlefield. I'd love to see some more in-depth testing on reliability to actually find the most optimal numbers. But it tends to be you don't want to really go any lower than 80 if it's the main part of the division. And there we go. We made the boyo Vauxhall tanks for the win and then start producing them. So you can see now that's the reason why we're making mills because we need to pump these into the tanks to produce as many as we can. And same, we're going to work down this industrial part of the focus tree. The very short part of the British industrial focus tree. British industry is... Not really a thing for a focus tree for Hoy. A Denmark trade proposal, which increases overall supply. Man, oh man. I want to say yes, because some of these bonuses to reduce supply are actually pretty good, but it increases consumer goods, and I don't want to do that because I need to maximize my industry. So Denmark, unfortunately, your bacon stays in Denmark. We focus a bit more on armor as well. Something we might not take advantage of. To be fair, we probably won't take advantage of this because it's armor skirts. I usually like armor skirts because breakthrough and armor is awesome. But just this one instance, I don't think I will take advantage of it. We'll just focus on bigger artillery, which gives bigger artillery guns. Like, for instance, the medium howitzer. Just so much soft attack, which is something we are going to work towards. More mills? Yeah, why not? Actually, that's probably a little bit too many. I'm trying to mix up my mills and sieve production early on. There we go. That's a good mix. We'll also go for the war industrial. Let's just give that 10% extra construction for the mills. You know, I've, ch I've a change of heart. Three lines of mills. There we go. I'm pretty sure in like a multiplayer game, the, the strategy is just to make civs all the way until like 1938. Then you go really heavy on the mills. Okay, crazy min-maxing here. We're going to go from officer cores to proper heritage. That's right, Dave's going to make horses. <laughs> this is so random. So now we make a brand new division, which you select division designer, new division, and then you select horse. Horse, horse, horse. 
But because we've gone to proper heritage, this is a free horse. Look, it's no cost. So you can now make a big, fat cavalry army at no cost, which is great. But then you're like, horses? Do you really need horses, Dave? Yeah, this is just a really wonky way of doing this, but it works. So whatever. Anyway, we saved that. We're also going to assign this to the garrisons because cavalry have more oppression. Suppression? Suppression? Oppression? And you can see here, look, from 100k manpower down to 75 and from uh, 9k, from 10k guns down to 9k. So we've saved a bit of equipment. And that's what it does really. The things that have more suppression uh, reduce the need for bigger divisions as a part of garrisons. We're not really doing it for that reason now. The reason we're doing it is we're going to train nine of those. We'll say 10. Deploy them, exercise them, and then we convert them into the more ideal tank division that we're going to use later on. So the tank division is here. We're going to use this existing one because it's going to save us a bunch of XP. So heavy tank, row one. Yep. And then we'll add... Oh, it's going to cost us XP to add the horses on. Okay, well, we'll come back to that later then. So the way they change the division designer is now whenever you add a new row, you have to spend 25 XP to add a new significant row. Unfortunately, the tank that you get for Britain is kind of rubbish because it's an independent tank division without any infantry, which is kind of annoying. Meanwhile, selling convoys, nice and cheap. However, we have more convoys that we can even sell. It starts off with a thousand convoys at the start of the game, which is a 200 more than they did in the previous patch. I don't know in some way they've got so many. Maybe it's a problem with the AI and they're trying to fix the AI problems. I'm not sure. But overall, you have so many. Yeah, you've got more than you can even really use. So sell some on the market, get a little bit of my money. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Also, if I have a look, sell equipment, add to market. Is there any old equipment that we can sell? Tanks, put them on a high price. Sure really nothing else i need to sell sell potentially old guns usually it's a top seller yep we're selling them pretty good okay right now so we've got a bonus for industry so i'm going to rush down here and this is important in the middle row because britain runs out of building slots pretty quickly in the mainland now you can build them in india if you want but that's a, a liability that's right david just said that uh, indians are reliability in hoi 4 which potentially can be for instance, if Italy chooses to do a naval invasion from here to here, AI won't do that. Or if Japan is really successful knocking out China and then they push through uh, Burma here, which can be an issue. But to be fair, like Yem, I usually do build serves inside of uh, the Raj. However, the infrastructure is not very good. Aguarian society, much. Stanley Baldwin has stepped down and now we have my favorite prime minister, Neville Chamberlain. Press one in the chat if you're a big fan of Neville. There's a little bit of a cheese. If the Ethiopians ask to go for Britain for exile, and you say no, they will always go to Sweden. And that means because Ethiopians are at war with Italy, which is in the Axis, Sweden will get dragged into the war, which can be a bit of a, an interesting diversion, but Sweden never really holds out very well against the Germans, so they'll get pushed into Norway and Denmark. I feel like that's kind of a buff for the Germans. So it's up to you if you want to do that. You want to buff the Germans? Hey, go for it. All right, more XP now so we can make the division bigger. We're going to add on cavalry because it's free. Is that worth it though? At the end of the day, we're going to end up changing it to motorized anyway. No, that's silly. We don't have the XP for it. Yeah, making divisions is really difficult now. I don't like this mechanic because now we're investing hundreds upon hundreds of XP into making divisions which isn't going to go into our doctrines. So potentially we're actually hurting our army in the long run. I think they need to look at this and this needs to be different XP or maybe this needs to be cheaper because I don't think this works the way it should anymore. Anyway, deploy the cavalry. We'll add you here in the north. Exercise to level three. Add a general. Oh, he's really good. Ooh, he's harsh. Harsh. A motorized effort and then exercise to level three. Once again, we'll come back to this. It'll make sense later. Trust me. Trust me. One of those things that'll make sense later in the game. Maybe we'll make another six of those. Yeah, we will. Realize I need my guns now, so I'm going to cancel that on the market. They weren't really selling that hot anyway. Realize maybe I need a little bit more motorized. That looks pretty balanced. I like that. I think I'm only going to put one into AA. I'm not going to need that much of it. I feel like, too, we've got too many divisions. We'll delete a few of them. So we got a nice straight 24. Next up, general rearmament. Reduce those consumer goods. Got a British austerity. Who needs public services anyway? Just pull all money from public services and just give it to rich people. Speaking about redistributing the wealth, we have a Patreon link below. Why don't you click on that and give me $5 and redistribute the wealth to Feedback Gaming Inc. I mean, seriously, though, if you like the content, maybe you want to invest into editors. Hey, it's completely optional. You don't have to. Or is it? Brands would like to join the allies. Welcome aboard. What I'm going to like to do is research Marines. Is it Marines I want or is it Mountaineers? I think it's Mountaineers. Now, deserts. Tanks suffer from bad attrition in deserts. I mean, it's annoying, but there's not much attack penalties for attacking to deserts. So we're going to just push through Libya pretty quickly and powerfully. Now, however, if we want to do a 
are landing into Italy, it's going to be a lot more difficult because if you can see really closely, you can see lots of mountains throughout the entirety of Italy. So we need to do as much as we can to mitigate those penalties. One thing we can do is kind of switch out mountaineers into our tank divisions. I don't know. We'll see how things go. I'm not sure how effective that strat's going to be. We'll see. You're about to see potentially a disaster. We'll see. Repair for the inevitable. Gaining plus five factory output. It's usually a bad idea to go for this one early, but I held back for some reason. Okay, more divisions. Deploy them. We're going to move them here. Same again. Exercise to level three. And when I have the more ideal division, which is coming soon, it's a slow process, this. One by one by one. We're going to go for 35 combat width. Yeah, 35 is what I want. We're getting there, slowly building the division we want. Now, the reason we want 35 is if you click on a desert tile here, you can actually see the most optimal combat width for this region. And you can see there, additional attacks, 35. That's right. 35 is the most optimal for attacking into deserts, plains. And that's it, I think. Yeah. However, mountains, the most optimal, is 25. It gets a lot narrower. So we'll try our absolute best to try and make it fit. You know, to be fair, then, we could do 25, then, couldn't we? We've kind of gone over that. Maybe we'll do 30 for happy medium, and then maybe take a few a few divisions off later on. Who knows? We'll see. All right. Gun complete. I've realized I have made a mistake, too. I need to put this on auto upgrade, but what we can do is upgrade the gun. Now, the medium howitzer, giving a juicy increase to our soft attack. Yes. One issue we run into here, the Spanish Civil War has ended a little bit early and our war support's dropped and we're mobilized more than we should. So one way of fixing that is to send an attache to China. In exchange for an attache and support against the Japanese, Hong Kong will be permanently British forever. Do you agree? No, 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 no. Yes! Ah, oh, they agree! Hong Kong British forever. And that's giving us war support again. Make sure you cancel your improved relations because you're eating political power. Anyway, artillery is done now, which is good. However, we're making big divisions. High supply ones. So logistics is king. All right. Voxel. I think I'm getting Voxel mixed up with another one of the Mayos. The same Mayo the tank? So it's got the same name. It's got the same name, but it's a different Mayo. Oh, that's so confusing. There's two Voxels. Okay, that feels like a bit of a, an oversight. Anyway, we're going to go for the stuff that boosts mechanized. More hardness for mechanized. That's so good. Then we also have the ability to make mechanized cheaper or add armor now armor's good but mechanized don't have a lot of armor to begin with so five percent of nothing is still nothing so i'd prefer to add the armor on the tank and that will add it to the division and this gives hardness this gives hardness extra soft attack sure and then the final one is breakthrough piercing or defense you get a lot of defense for mechanized so we'll do that and then we'll just stack the rest because that's easy all right, the boys are exercised to level three. And now we're going to change the more ideal template. Let's make sure it's complete, though. I think this is good for now. And you can see the hardness here is 32%. We can get a lot higher than that, but we're lacking tanks. So we'll just work up to that level. And this looks all pretty good for now. So what we do now is we grab the big horse division, convert to tank. And what we've done here is we've tried to hold on as much XP as possible. This has been this is not as strong as it used to be. We've now lost 75% of our XP from level three to level two. So this is not as strong as it used to be. This used to be like a bit of a glitch you could do to try and retain XP just for a little bit longer. It's not as good as it used to be. So big doubt if you want to actually do this one now, think about it. But we will keep behind a few horses to exercise. So we definitely don't have enough tanks. No, we have nowhere near enough tanks. We've actually got way too few now. We're just going to convert those back. And this is probably one of the reasons why you want to focus heavily on reliability because you're going to lose a lot of tanks exercising to level three and level three gives a 25 percent attack bonus so it just makes tanks just really really strong the bren carrier is now complete and we need to produce these two so bren carrier voxel and i think what we'll do is just add 15. that means we can produce significantly less motorized but we had just the right number of motorized that's so lucky mountaineers too god all the research is finishing at once it's christmas what are you getting for Christmas? Please tell me in the comments below. So we're focusing on stuff that we're going to go to war with now because it's 1938. So soft attack, breakthrough. Still working on our factory stuff. Logistics is good for the supply. We'll work on the next one immediately. We'll add that on to the division two. Big divisions need supply reductions. To top it off as well as I'm going to add on one mechanized as well. Just the one. This is the way it works. Is as you produce more mechanized, you start to replace it with mechanized over motorized, which gives more hardness and better stats overall. Mechanize is the future. You see we are behind right now, but don't worry about it. We'll catch up. And to be fair, if you're not adding that many onto the division and not in active combat, you won't lose that many anyway. I've just realized this build requires so much XP. I'm not going to be able to do my doctrines. This is, once again, this is one of the downsides of modifying your division templates. 
you want to diversify and have a marine an infantry division and a tank division but then you don't have enough xp to actually do your doctrines then i feel like that's a little bit of something that needs to be tweaked in future if we look closely now at exercising yeah the amount of heavy tanks we're losing now are super small like almost like one a day almost it's just so small that's amazing because usually losing a heavy tank which is a very high production cost can really hurt in the long run we're mainly just losing trucks and infantry equipment which is stuff that's super cheap that can be easily replaced anyway and once again we have now got a slight amount of mechanized in the stockpile so i'll just add another on to the division and just slowly migrate towards the harder division this could be useful too airborne forces department reduces special forces doctrine by 25 percent times two yeah we'll take advantage of that more mills sure 38 we should be making mills now anyway but we'll make a few sips too just to supplement our economy all right look at these boys exercise to level three with a 25 percent attack bonus let's move these guys to africa and we're gonna need a few ports here otherwise we're gonna have low supply heavy tank chasse is complete which i think it's a 1940s heavy tank the churchill ready for battle reliability is through the roof so now we can go back to the bougie suspension someone in the comments is going to tell me i'm saying that wrong or maybe even the christie suspension oh my god is dave actually making a tank for speed here what's wrong with him it's opposite day there we go five kilometers per hour that's as fast as you're going to get from me okay the munich conference oh no goodbye checks what are the germans doing what is their plans here the son of field marshal of course we've got to go for mr bernard i guarantee you don't know this but my profile picture was originally based on this bro everyone saw the uh, beret and thought oh that's Sheikh Guevara. like no it's bernard montgomery come on guys come on we're better than this and you can see now supply is in this region so we can move the boyos over look at this monster with four turret machine guns on it world war one tank how effective would that be well it's actually surprisingly effective sure if we replace them with small cannons it gives a little bit extra soft tap but we're losing reliability so up to 56 from 52 no not worth not worth it does give hard attack though which is pretty spicy okay mechanized equipment giving breakthrough and we can also up the reliability slightly you get so many losses of mechanizing combat because it's the mainstay of the division key and that reliability nice and high is just super important and once again we can up the division once again by adding on more mechanized which is doing two things so right now we're at uh, 48 percent hardness and now we're at 60 percent hardness so every time i've tried to explain this i've got it completely wrong or i just feel like i've flaked the explanation soft attack deals damage to softness 60 percent softness hard attack does damage to hardness Hard attack is significantly harder to get in Hoi 4. It comes more late game, and it also is more revolved around anti-tank stuff. So in short, more hardness equals less damage from soft attack, which soft attack tends to be higher, meaning overall less damage received overall. Was that a good explanation? No, Dave, that was bad. It was awful. Try again. Something I always forget to do is pull divisions from my puppet nations and then add them on and defend front lines for instance ethiopia is something i always forget to hold on to so the more of those you pull off your allies the more likely you'll take out this area at lightning speed and you potentially have got like 50 divisions you could potentially take from your allies so my advice is take advantage of it new zealand how many divisions you got come on bro everyone's going to be involved here four divisions is that the most you can give me it's going to have to do then isn't it and here they are they're arriving so just covering this front line covering this one more than likely the italians will leave gaps in the front line it'll cause them a lot of problems so don't worry about it meanwhile here go here go here front line z and x is the hotkeys you want to focus on and they were on the front line here and we've got excellent supply perfect also the navy we're going to desperately need that in the mediterranean so i'm going to do strike force over all the sea zones this will prevent them from doing navy invasions because they'll need to get the efficient amount of naval supremacy and trust me, they won't, because our navy is massive. Keep an eye on the Mayo bonuses. Because you're automatically queuing up the traits, it's hard to tell when a new Mayo becomes available. So if you look here, see this up arrow here? It means there's a new variant of possible that the, the Mayo could improve this. And it's a good one too. It's a great variant. Up it by clicking on here, and you can see it's increasing hardness by 3%. Is it 3% or 6%? 100% worth get it get it get it get it get it so trying to focus on things that give us more benefit at war so soft attack passive bonuses working on artillery and i saw a bit of excavation that i could have a bonus for so i went for that as well because you're a part of the british empire and you have other research teams as a part of the commonwealth 
you gain research bonuses uh, because you have mutual agreements. So for instance, can I show an example? Here we go, 50% bonus here because Australia, Canada, New Zealand, and South Africa and British Raj have all researched this, so they're giving you a collaboration bonus of 50%. Nice. I wouldn't ever go for that, though, because I don't want any anti-tank. But it's nice that it's there, right? So what I'm going to do is put this general here on aggressive. And what we're going to do is the minute the war kicks off is we're going to try and push out here. It might have limited success. However, Italy has gone crazy with the amount of divisions it's put here. Might be one of the reasons why Italy doesn't do too well. They're trying to defend areas that just don't need defending. Little bug here. Well, it's not really a bug, but if you use strike force and you're too far away from one of the sea zones, it shows red right here. That means we're not doing any naval suppression. Not naval suppression. Naval supremacy. And therefore, we move to Malta here. You can see now we have actually got some uh, projection. So just move it to the middle of all the zones that you're trying to project to. Engineers. Yeah, flame tanks. They're always useful, right? And right now we have way too many uh, mills. We've got more mills than we need. I know we're a little bit behind on mech, but don't worry too much about that because we'll catch up in no time. Goes without saying, but the entirety of the army needs full motorized priority. These areas of Africa have got really bad supply, so you need to fix them by maximizing supply in those regions, uh, particularly here, for instance. But you can see the Italians are already struggling. They're going to get embargoed immediately when the war kicks off, so they'll be able to take out Ethiopia. Maybe the problem is... Maybe the solution is to wait for them to bleed supply a little bit, then hit into them and attack them, maybe. Issue gas masks is a good one, giving war support and stability. So we'll do that one now. Did you know the British government made a lot of money selling gas masks in World War II? Yeah? There was this belief that the war was going to be all about chemical warfare and mustard gas, a bit like similar to World War I, but it never actually happened. But they sold a lot of money selling gas masks, gas masks to the general public. It was very, very profitable to the war effort. Who needs war bonds when you just sell... People, the idea of fear, and then they end up buying it. But that was deep, Dave. Wow, that's some deep stuff. Guarantee! Poland! Remember, you're Britain. You always need to do that. Don't forget about it. So for the most part, I'm not really showing as much as I normally would. I'm trying to keep up the every single click thing, but there's not a great deal to show. A lot of the stuff is just really predictable. And of course, I'm not going to explain why I'm going for soft attack for artillery, because it's blatantly obvious why I'm doing it. Side note, mechanize. If you modify it, you have the ability to drop the cost by 50%. That's huge. However, you do lose reliability. This is super effective. You're basically making it half price. You can spit out mechanized at lightning speed. You can almost make mechanized as cheap as motorized, which is just insane if you think about it. The big, however, it costs you a lot of XP. So unfortunately, because we spent all our XP making the tank, I wouldn't recommend it in this one. So maybe think twice about doing that. I think it's time for a fully mechanized army in 1939. What do you think, guys? What do you think? Something I don't do frequently, even though I know it's so OP, and the reason why I don't do it very often is look at these penalties. Forests, hills, mountains, 11%. Well, that's actually not that bad. Urban, 28%. It's good. It's just that infantry are just more universal and flexible, and they work in all terrain types where tanks just tend to be a little bit more limited. It'd be kind of cool if they upped the damage you could do with tanks in certain terrain types where infantry is beneficial universally, so you get that feeling of certain types work in better areas. I don't know, something like that. Maybe that's be Hearts of Iron 4 at 5. Hearts of Iron 5. Britain. History of monarchies, the aristocracy. Squishing and pushing down the peasants. Encourage the colonial elite. Oh, how very Britain of you. And it's time. Danzig or war. And we're now in the war. We're going to grab the planes, put them here, and put them on interception. For the most part, I'm not really going to use my planes too much. However, I have got naval strike. So it's usually a good idea to knock out the submarines at the very start of the war. So I actually am going to do that. Straight away, we're hitting Italian submarines. Are we at war with the Italians straight away? Oh my goodness, we are. All right, micro time. So what I'm going to do is do a spearhead attack order. It's this one. And then go here and then here. And if you hover over it, actually, we have to delete the existing order. There we go. And if you hover over it, when you create the order, you can see where they're going to go. It's not really what I want to go here. Actually, what we'll just do is we'll just attack and then I'll manually micro them. So they're moving here. So I'm going to press H to hold to unpause a few times. There you go. Then control right click to support attack. Actually, no, just manually click. There's like a thing in Hoi that if you let the battle plans work, you hold on to planning bonus longer. However, if you manually move them, they lose planning bonus like four times the rate. Look how quick we're destroying them here. So the reason why this is so effective is they're doing very little damage to us. The hardness of these divisions is very high and they only have six hard attack four hard attack 
the amount of damage that they're, they're throwing at this mechanized and heavy tanks he's barely doing any damage because their armor is so unbelievably high and of course we're high on soft attack and most of these infantry are, are soft attack so we're basically tearing them apart with artillery fire you stay here please and micro right click go here holding shift I have to pause every now and then and unpause to keep up the production no keep going here lads go here go here we want to pin them so we can encircle them i'm sure those flame tanks have just finished always go for the medium flamer because it is overall the most cost effective i think that is the cheapest and then change it to a flame a bit of a weird bug that you have to sometimes click here for the yeah that's the flamer and add that on to infantry designer yeah 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 good i'm gonna go three speed and unpause and as you can see as i push into here i do lots of damage but remember we're wrapping around the back of them here as we push further forward and you can see the damage we're doing is just insane go here and then holding shift and right clicking to move around the back around the outside around the outside we can also mobilize a bit more extensive conscription why not Poland join the allies why not france join the war yes i'm not gonna uh, yeah actually everyone else joins the war as well i'm just holding enter key and just clicking really quickly there right now they're having supply issues here i don't think this is gonna last are they even gonna attack into us no we'll just hold out for the time being if we cut off all of this region and the italians are gonna be in a bad way anyway and that's one encirclement and another one and then another one and then beeline to the victory points. I'm gonna put them on aggressive too. Take a front line. Off you go. Tobruk. The fortress of Tobruk held for so long by the Brits. And uh, now uh, the Italians held it for just a few days. Classic Italian incompetence. Benghazi. Famous for all the wrong reasons. And yoink. Oh no, they're holding out. This is where things get tricky because you get low supply. There's not a lot of you can do about this for the time being. Because you're so far away from supply lines on this front line, it just becomes really difficult. All right, attack. Go aggressive. Off you go. I think we might be able to keep sliding around the back here. Make an encirclement on this. It's always a better idea to try and get the encirclement like that than it is to just push into the front line. I'm tempted to move the troops over to here, but we're going to need some ports on this area. I'll build them up for the French. We can get around the back here as well. Yeah, yeah. All right, military training act. So get rid of the war to end all wars, gaining this manpower. However, Britain's got a lot of manpower, so you don't tend to need this one too much, but it's there. Goodbye, Poland. Rip. One issue you also run into is you need supply on this side as well. So just keep building the port. So be aware when France falls, this area will be given to Vichy France. And I think you might get teleported out if you're within this region. So just an FYI. Ooh, we've got an opportunity for encirclement here. So I'm going to stop battle planning and actually manually move myself. But you can see the supply is bad. We're low on fuel, which gives a massive malice to speed. There you go. Lack of fuel, minus 60% speed. Look at all those reds, said America every single time. F. I was referring to the Soviets, by the way. No? Okay, you didn't get it. Never mind. F. F in the joke. Boom. Another encirclement. Well, once again, all I'm doing is right-clicking to attack and holding shift to, like, make snakes around the front line. That's all I'm doing. And once again, the only reason I'm winning this, even though I'm super low supply, is because the divisions have so much hardness and they have no hard attack by Belgium. Gonna have to build more ports as I go because the supply here is just absolute dog. Chamberlain has resigned. Oosh, keep going. More ports. Keep going. So what I'm doing there is improving my anti-air because I just got the research for that and I'm still progressing as I go. Train maybe four more cavalry, which I will convert into tanks when the time comes. Now, the way you want to do this is snake to Tripoli, but it becomes difficult because you're so far away from your supply lines, as I mentioned earlier. So I'm just right-clicking and moving further forward. And once again, it's just really difficult. Be very careful with this because you might run into situations where you become overextended, and I have. So that means I'm going to have to pull back to where I'm building, which is actually not too far from my front line. So just C, fall back line, do control click to assign them back to that front line. And be aware when you're low supply, your organization's really low and you might find yourself losing battles that you think you would normally win. Like for instance, like this. So FYI, just hold for steady and you'll be okay. I'm there for you. I'll help you. So supply's getting a little bit better now because we're building the ports up. And here comes the supply. Goodbye, France. F for France. And now we're in a really good position. So I'm just going to hold ground. I can go for Panzer Expert too. Armor Specialist. Realize we've not got the infantry guy as well. Uh, regrouping. We need infantry expert? No, but it would be useful. We might have to go for the commando guy later on when we switch out. All right, everyone's good to go. And then we just finish off by pushing it. We don't even need to encircle here because we're not encircling anyway. As long as we push into Tripoli, nice and aggressive. But the amount of damage we're doing there is just eye-watering. Oh my goodness, it's like, am I even trying? British Blitzkrieg in Libya. To be fair, the tank action in, in uh, Africa for Britain... 
in Italy and Germany to a certain degree was actually pretty intense. So I want to do a naval invasion from here to here. It's really difficult to land into apart from this plane tile here. But the mountains here are going to be a right nightmare. I might have to switch out the division, which you'll see later on anyway. Look at all these ports. How ugly is this? And yep, there's no way of actually dismantling a port after you built it. Nope, it's permanent. That's the way it is. Wow. So they did, they did a bombing run of Malta to take and knock out my navy. They probably did some damage. Oh, they did lots of damage. However, they lost 78 bombers and six naval bombers. Worth? I'm not certain, but we're going to repair anyway. Deploying a bunch of troops here. We get a bunch of divisions in exile, which I'm just going to take advantage of to defend. Britain, remember my full navy is in the Mediterranean, so they can do a naval invasion on me if they wanted to. And that would be quite nasty. So that's why I'm defending my coastline. Once again, even if they do a naval invasion, it's very difficult to follow through because I think it's a combination of the AI struggling with naval invasions, but also simultaneously that the English Channel is really difficult to take. So just a good to know, I guess. Go back onto interception here to make sure we're shooting down any bombers that are causing problems. Once again, it's really difficult to do damage here because we've got radar here. And then we also have maxed out uh, anti-air. Just makes it really, really difficult uh, for them to do any bombing here without sustaining ridiculous amounts of damage. Battle of Britain? Much. Is it time for the Italian counterattack? It's looking still pretty fresh here. Maybe I should break off the subs and try and lock them down. Okay, we're convoy raiding now and we are intercepting them. Yep, I think this might cause them to have more of a supply problem now. Yep, we are hitting convoys. How many convoys do they actually have though? Between 271 and 461. You could do that by right clicking and doing an Intel ledger. I realize I'm getting a little bit lazy, guys. I'll be totally honest with you. I'm, uh, these unedited videos, I feel like I'm not talking as much as I should. So I'm um, not including bits in the video. My apologies if I forget to do that. If there's any elements of this video that I feel was missed, please let me know in the comments and I'll try and cover them in a dedicated video. All right, counterattack time. Push, push, push. Oh, that's brilliant. And do we do air support and help them out? Yeah, we do. And we're just basically going to put them on close air support. So there we will know all ones of the bombers. And then right click onto this specific army. And then they'll help out. And then we get to clear out Ethiopia. And the bombers have arrived now. And they're doing mighty fine damage. Oh, what's this? You appear to be stuck. I hit the console by mistake there. Got fat fingers, boys. There's three ports you want. This one, this one, and this one. If you get all three, then you know you've won. I'm going to control B here to railroad them to the front line. I'll let the AI take care of it. The south's easy to close because it's all planes. Oh, the north is a nightmare because of the mountains. Meanwhile, a new upgrade for the tank. New, bigger barrel, more soft attack, more damage potential. No brainer, go for it. Also an upgrade for the mechanized, which gives you extra defense. You know what? I don't care too much about that, so we'll leave that one off. So don't always need to go for the myo bonus the minute they become available. Just think about it. If you don't need it, don't go for it. I'm going to help them out here by building a port because the supply here is dreadful. I've never seen this before. So the Romanians have approached us to mitigate the Transylvania issue. Transylvania stays with Romania. Why not? And uh, the Hungarians have declared war in Romania. <laughs> Historical game, by the way. Okay, naval invasion time. Do you want to convert to mountaineers first, though? Something I don't usually do because I feel like this is a massive waste of XP. I'll say this again. I don't usually do this because it's just a massive waste. Look how much this is costing. Oh, this is so not worth it. 75 XP and it even puts me over the special forces limit. Uh, this mechanic needs to be tweaked because this does not work the way I feel like it should. But then if I go for tip of the spear, it's 50% cheaper, which makes it slightly more favorable. And then we do commando expert too. Ah, uh, we're really going to do this. Okay, I'm going to save it. We'll only do a handful of divisions. Save, mountaineer, mountaineer, mountaineer. We're going to do 25 combat width as well. I've decided on that. We're going to have to add on motorized AA, which is 25 XP. Oh, paradox. So expensive. Artillery. I need a little bit of artillery. Only a little bit. And then we convert eight of them, what should we say? Will that be enough? Is this the one with the mountaineers? I think it might be. Yes, it is. We need to give this a special icon. Yeah, we'll give it the, uh, the shark exercise to level three, and then we're off we go. And of course, now we have the option to take advantage of... The special forces upgrade so mountaineers we also get to go for this guy which gives mountaineers attack bonus which is the kind of the cheap way of getting special forces for mountaineer attack extra initiative mountaineers are cheaper dave seriously <laughs> so we've, we've figured out the strategy as we go in here lads yeah it would have been better to do that in the long run cheaper mountaineers okay oh, extra attack for mountaineers in mountains oh that's so good all right secured the south only one port left North is becoming more of a problem as it usually is. Done! 
Self secured. Once again, no, not really much actual micro here. Just right clicking a little bit and uh, using the battle plans. So many divisions. Rip. But this is a really good way of exercising my generals, I suppose. So this is kind of worth getting lots of infantry expert, which is always worthwhile. Anyway, naval invasion time. Yep, we have the capability to do it. We're intercepted though. Okay, we need to take off these orders and put them on escort. So eventually they'll help defend the tanks and they've arrived my fleet need all of my air force here because this is going to cause lots of problems if i'm not prepared so go here air superiority naval strike and the naval invasion has begun and no surprise there but the naval penalty is absolutely brutal we're just hoping for empty ports and there is one here so we'll take advantage of that and i think we'll probably should be able to get it pretty easy once again losing one of these divisions is going to be very painful but if you secure a port we're pretty good ah oh, that's it done winner winner chicken dinner I realize it's a mountaineer, but I've gone for a shark. It's just dawned on me that. As we right click and push into here, I think this should go swimmingly. Yes. Just pushing over the straight, though, is just not going to be doable. The way you get around that, is you literally go around that. Here, here. We can go here and here. We'll try. We'll try that. Eight divisions. Yeah, why not? Do it. Got to be careful of fuel because we're going to be eating a lot of fuel for the tanks, the planes, and the air force and the navy. So we'll get a bit of that from America. And we're uh, defeating the Italian navy. One mistake I made in one of the previous videos is I wasn't splitting up my air force, my air force, my navy as much. Uh, I would really recommend doing that. It's really important. Otherwise, you suffer from overstacking penalties, which really hinders your ability to do any big damage. And also make sure you assign your naval dot yards onto repairs because those repairs are going to take a while. Okay, I'm going to disband a bunch of my armies here because I've got too many divisions here. It's always a supply bottleneck problem in this region, so I'm taking care of it now. There used to be an old strategy where if you split off your submarines really heavily, you could intercept more convoys, but you would do overall less damage. And that does seem to be still the case. Because we're intercepting uh, Italian freights, but you do less overall damage because there's less torpedo damage from the submarines. But we are intercepting some. You hover over, you can see it's troop transports. And obviously that's really lucrative because we're taking out actual divisions here. Destroyers for bases? No! And yeah, same again. But this one is freight. So that's just his supply as well as resources. So less lucrative, so not as worth. All right, we've reached the point now. We've run out of resources. Uh, I guess we could up the infrastructure and then... I always like to build civs in India. Lower the autonomy so we get to integrate India. Is that a good thing? All my Indian viewers now are like, no, that's a terrible thing, Dave. My five Indian viewers. <laughs> Man, Romania really held out. Now we have a big Hungary. Okay, resources are becoming a problem now. Now you have a choice to squeeze the economy, which I think I'm going to do that. And then we're still behind on resources. Another upgrade for the tank. Yeah, I realize this tank has no turret. There you go, boom, there's a turret. Are you happy now? And it's got a bigger overall gun doing more overall soft attack. And who can argue with that, right? More soft attack is definitely a win. Could change around our production a little bit here. Put more onto guns so we can upgrade more, more soft attack. And also anti-air could do with improvement too because we don't have a lot of anti-air. Also, we can improve our artillery. Give an extra soft attack. Can't argue with that. And then we guess we upgrade them and just tweak that around. Also, we can add on to our garrison division a little bit of artillery as well. End of day. Support artillery is probably one of the best improvements you can make to your division in the long run. So big win for taking advantage of that early on. Just adds for the amount of resources you have to put in, the amount of the XP you have to put in, the cost you get back from soft attack as a part of your division with support artillery is massive. We plan another naval invasion. I'm going to be fair with you. If I do another naval invasion, I want to make sure I do it with crap infantry that I'm okay losing. So we're going to grab these French and Polish divisions and uh, do a naval invasion. Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to move all my air force over to here now. And I'm going to see if I can just do lots of damage in this region and maybe just close this pocket because it's annoying me that I'm to do a two front war here. All right, push. Once again, if I had more soft attack based divisions, it might be a bit easier. But it looks like we are doing a little bit of damage, even though we're not pushing the entirety of the front. This supply decay is actually pretty big. If we could knock that one out, that would cause all the southern flank to break. I never quite understood, you know, like why this area never gets uh, completely supply cut off because they can't go through the Suez. Can't go through Gibraltar. Maybe they are going through Gibraltar. Maybe that's the problem. Okay, naval invasion. Land behind. Guy from the south. Push. Not actually enough firepower. Okay, we actually get around the back of them here. But the amount of damage we can deal is so low. Due to the fact that it's a mountain and a strait. <laughs> this is such a hard part of the world to break if you've not got like the right kind of division. Oh, goodbye French and Polish divisions you tried. Do you know what? I think for the very first time, I think I'm going to actually take the L and just not break through into it. I don't think it's going to be lucrative for me because I'm going to get I'm going to be bashing against mountains. It's usually what I normally do. 
But I realized in this instance, it's actually not worthwhile. The real win here, go back to the tank, go from the 36 combat width to maximum effectiveness. There we go. Support artillery. I forgot to add the flames on. I also forgot to add on the rangers too for the mountaineer bonus. Well, that might actually have helped me. Oh, well. Ooh, this is spicy now. With a hardness of 77%. Okay. Naval invasion. Dover into Brest. Yeah. Yeah, around there. And I need the technology as well. So I'm going to go for landing craft. It's 1941 and we've not progressed down the first doctrine. Makes me question if I even want that doctrine anymore. No, I don't actually think I need, to need it anymore. Military theorist, we're going to go. Yeah, mobile warfare. Let's do it. I'm in a position right now that I think the Navy is suffering because the Air Force is suffering. So what I'm going to do is just produce just a few naval bombers. Torpedo, light machine gun, up the engine and add on floats for extra sea detection and then use the naval myo. Yep and just produce a few of those. This is one of the downsides of using the big turrets on tanks. Look at the amount of chromium usage I've got right now. It's insane. It's because of this big turret. One turret requires three. Oh, actually, it's just one chromium. Okay. And then, of course, additional chromium for the regular tank as well. So the net amount of chromium needed is 158. Wow. Okay, at this point, I think it might be better for limited exports, but I already am on limited exports, so it would have to be closed economy. Okay, combo riding the entirety of the med. Make sure you press D a few times to split off the fleet, otherwise you will not get 100% combo raiding efficiency and it just not be as effective as it should be. But right now, I think we've fully embargoed Italy, even though we don't need to take the mainland anyway. Convoys, yeah, they're down to 200. Also, Greece, yep. Combo ride the entirety of the med. You know what? Let's optimize my infantry. we we'll do seven twos. We can add rangers on. And we can't afford anything else. Story of my life. Flames. That's the next one. Yeah. Landing craft is done. So that increases the naval invasion capacity by plus 20. That means the entirety of my army can now go here. However, it's going to take a while to plan this. 94 days. Oof. In the meantime, just work on our guns, our production. See, there's an upgrade potential for the tank. This will give it more heart attack and piercing. That's actually really rubbish for me. Uh, piercing's okay. Okay, we'll go for that. Try my best to try and get more supply in this region. And the only way I can see it's possible is by improving the railroad, railroads, railroads, ro, 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 uh, into Abyss Abba. And I'm just trying to do that as the best I can to just get the supply working here. Do a little tease, a break of this front line. Ooh, we're actually doing okay damage now, but it's still not enough to break them. We cycle attack them a few times, maybe. But then the org is so low, we just can't maintain the offensive. So get rid of the special forces guy and go org recovery. Oh, this is something I always forget about. So Government in Exile has a benefit because there's a few buttons here that are like really OP. And one of them is Join Exercises. Here we go. So you spend Command Power, which is practically three points, and you gain a, just an eye-watering amount of XP. And you can do it for every nation that's in Exile. So in this case, I'll remove the more air crews. And then it gives me the option to do another one with the Polish. Look at all the XP I gain. And the Command Power just ticks up again, and you just select it again. Also, I've got an attache in China, so I'll withdraw that. There you go, another 50 command power. This is just free XP. I feel like this is a feature that everyone's just forgotten about. Join exercises with the Ethiopians and with the French. Look at all that XP. I can max my air doctrines now. Something I'm not even taking advantage of anyway. Yeah, there we go. Do this, even though I never planned to do that. Well, pride of the fleet. Okay, this is the beginning of the end of the fleet of Italy. Yep, their fleet is absolutely knackered. Not really losing much convoys, though. The AI tends to put the convoys up. But then if it sees you are heavily convoyed, it just puts them away and says, don't go in those regions. They kind of are blockaded, but we're not losing any more convoys. Japan is in the war, declared war on Malaya. Am I going to defend this area of the world? Nope. United States would like to join the war. Yeah, go for it. I think they're already at war with the Japanese anyway, aren't they? Yep. Is it naval invasion time? Yep. Big force, English Channel. I'm going to rebase them into Europe, though. It's some reason they don't want to move. And the minute they arrive, should be a naval invasion immediately. Yep, yeah, off they go. All right, my D-Day, kind of. And it's always coming. I didn't expect this. I'm actually impressed. AI has been very competent. In all my other videos I've recorded, like the AI has uh, made big errors and allowed me to take advantage of them. But in this one instance, they're actually being relatively smart. Ah, there's a port there that they've left undefended. Is that the one we plan next? Yeah, sure. Yeah, we'll do that. All right, is it time to break them? This is the one time they've left this port empty, and this is crucial to holding the south. Supply here is important. Yep, they've left it naked, and that's opened up the south for us now. Whoosh. So remember, we're using this division now. Where is it? This one. More soft attack and more terrain bonuses. So this should help us out. 
Ooh, the tank did something then to upgrade the artillery. But I just spotted that the flame tank had a bonus. So flame tanks now give a bonus to breakthrough for infantry, motorized, and mechanized. Wow. I think we've reached the beginning of the end for this. So we can make a push. And yeah, we're breaking them. At long last, the Italians finally getting pushed out of East Africa. Restore the Ethiopians in exile. No, actually not. Oh man, just chew through them. It wasn't air support too. It was just the divisions. And they're out of there. I think the only conclusion I can come to is they pulled divisions out. Maybe they put them on the Eastern Front. Because there's no other explanation of why this area held out for so long. Another thing I forgot about with Britain is you've got this guy. Where is he? The Amphibious Assault Genius increases this planning speed by 15%. You know what? 15% isn't even that high. So that means every 10 days, you get a day and a half for free. So instead of 10 days, it's eight and a half days. Okay, that can add up over time, particularly if it's like a 100-day plan. Okay, I'll... Okay, okay. The more I thought about that, the more I worked the numbers in my head, the more I was like, okay, that actually isn't that bad. Okay. Rule Britannia! I'm doing another naval invasion. And will it be a success? I don't know. There is one gap here. I have to go three speed, though, because with the minute I land, I need to counterattack into the sides. Hang on, are we even landing in that province? Here we are. There's one guy, and he's uh, a little bit late. He's super late. Oh, and I'm getting naval invaded. I'm getting... Uh, Convoy raided. It's the one guy that needs to land so we can push out. Okay, here we go. Two go here. Two go here. Go three speed. Now the amount of damage. Oh, look at the difference. So this is the ones doing naval invasions. And of course, it's rubbish because they're heavy tanks. They can't float. They just sink. But then look at this guy. A thousand soft attack. No kills. I need full air superiority here too. It looks like the West Frank. Flank? Flank. That's West, West Flank. It's really struggling to my words this morning. It's breaking faster than the eastern one. One more division. No, they're reinforcing. It's actually looking like this might not even work. So are we going to have to do a late game cast spam? You're starting to realize now why feedback gaming rarely makes tanks. And you're seeing living proof of that. I will say, though, that light tanks tend to be overall more effective, but they don't have as much hardness. The reason light tanks do better is because they have uh, less terrain penalties. Oh, they're not reinforcing here. That's the reason why this eastern flank isn't breaking. So maybe if I hold ground and maybe try and cancel one of the attack orders here. Oh, and then one of the best ones going to reinforce. No, yes, no. What is happening? Okay, we just lost two tank divisions there. Yep, I am starting to realize now why I don't usually make big fat tank divisions. Listen, they work. Okay, cancel the battle plan. It ain't working. Okay, we did enable the major it failed miserably uh, i'm a little bit frustrated a little bit because once again i've invested so much production into these tanks but they're just not combat effective unless they've got good supply and they're attacking into the train types they want to attack into i don't usually do this but it's time for a tech switch and we're going to spam cast cast armor and we're going to go for rockets rocket cast will it be effective no idea we're going to find out india investment took a long time coming but civvies in india building that future indian economy india strong new mechs researched start pumping them out they i believe have higher hardness the more you upgrade them let me double check that the old ship by the way you can compare them like for like your hardness 63 percent to 77 percent and the final one is 82.5 percent wow they buffed mech and also the final upgrade has a passive bonus gaining 50 percent soft and hard attack for all mechanized that's really big hey cast time bomb locks bomb locks Big engine, gas designer, and I need range, but there is no range in the minute. So these ones are going to have to do for now. All excess goes into the cast. I need aluminium from France. Oh, France, my enemy. But of course, now, because we've tech switched, we can, when one, this is done, we're going to go for EP and to reduce the cost. If you want to reduce the autonomy of like Malaya, for instance, all you got to do is build a bunch of supply depots in them. It actually works for all the other nations too. Like in the past, you can't build factories inside of ones that are a dominion but if you just build let's say railways or forts inside of them that still works that might be a glitch okay just queuing up the miles again looking for the ones that give extra ground attack god there's so many too this one focuses on just ground attack where this one focuses on kind of dog fighting abilities i'm just gonna do all the ground attack that's all i care about i think pretty much the german air force is probably weaker than it's ever been at this point so i'm just gonna spam them out also click on the quick deploy and we're gonna deploy cas deploy 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 and naval strike there's a focus here where we're focusing on upgrading our churchills to give the ones with the biggest barrel as you can see there's 2000 that are out of date and these are the latest ones with the biggest barrel so they're the ones i'm going to upgrade to once again though it means i'll overall do more soft attack overall there's no point having 
tanks just stuck in the stockpile. We can upgrade quicker than we can produce them. So just better to uh, upgrade. Range improvements. This one's a biggie. So naval bombers definitely need the range. Extra fuel tanks. Can we take that? Yes, we can. Upgrade the engine too. Off you go. Also with the cast that we're spamming out in big numbers. Late game cast spam is so strong. Extra fuel tanks, range. Yep. Realize I've gone for cast, but I've gone down the fighter path for my air doctrines. Oops. Is it too late for a, a massive doctrine switch? No, it's never too late. Now we can make it with rockets, which have better agility. So we do that than the agility. Oh, it has actually more ground attack. Oh, I didn't even know that. Okay, rockets are better than bomb locks. More than you know, eh? All right, it's naval invasion time anyway. Yeah, air superiority, ground attack and naval attack for you but everyone else is going to do bombing runs it doesn't matter we've got a mix of everything here it doesn't matter so close air support and naval strike naval invasion merge the fleet up do naval invasion support currently don't have any naval supremacy we're waiting for the fleet to get into position and 42 percent wow they've got the big fleet here yeah, they really have okay i guess we're gonna have to strike this region a few times with uh, naval strikes the air force here might be projecting really heavily 48 percent in that case we'll combo raid this region then and there we go naval invasions activated okay so it's looking a little bit more beneficial to me now but top that off i still want to do naval invasion support because i want shore bombardment and there you go the shore bombarding now and you can see 24 percent reduction in their defense overall the division we're doing this with is this one you remember the ones who uh, did really well in africa well they're doing really well in europe now and welcome aboard lads are oh, beautiful and now the tanks can arrive and now we can start doing some big damage aggressive off you go land go 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 when the tanks arrive the damage should be ridiculously huge yeah it is ah oh, here we go and then attack 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 I feel really good about this because I, I had a point where I felt a little bit disheartened because my beautiful tanks that I spent so much in weren't really doing that much. And now the tanks are going to basically pay their weight now in gold because they are going to demolish the Germans. Liberation of Paris. I don't actually care about Vichy France. Oh, I'm actually at war with them now. Oh, and they're actually pushing westward as well. Okay, I hope the Americans can take care of that. Yeah, this is probably a bit of a stretch. But can I convert my entire to my army to tanks? Kind of kind of just do it just do it oh my goodness the push and once again the hardness of these divisions is so high the amount of damage they can do to me is very limited what hardness are we up to now hardness 84 percent and then we can start cast striking as well attach them on to the armies and straight away the amount of cast damage is going to be super high as well we got to lose a lot of them too because they don't have a lot of very good air attack or agility i don't really care at this point I was disheartened by the multiple naval invasions that didn't work. The invasion of Italy that didn't work. I was mentally and physically destroyed. However, I am very, very happy the way this is going now. Oh, clean up in the south. Nice. Control B to get them to the front line quicker. And just push into the front lines. Keep an eye on your logistics too. Make sure you're not falling behind on anything. We're a bit behind on tanks, but I don't feel too disheartened by that. One advantage as well is we've smashed through the west wall really quickly here. Heavy tanks have an attack bonus when attacking into forts. It's a very small one, but it works. So it, it's insane to see this. I, I'll admit, there's a lot of things I said in this video that I regret saying because tanks are super effective in the right conditions, but you just need to get the right conditions. As you can see here, I didn't get the right conditions. So that's the reason why I didn't do very well. It's bashing into the Maginot here and uh, doing a pretty decent job, to be fair, because they can't hit my divisions very hard due to the hardness being so high. They're doing so well on the eastern front, but western front, wow, just demolished. Can you just imagine all of a sudden these troops that drop here? They've been trained for naval invasions. They do it. They succeeded. And then immediately they're told, guys, congratulations. You've been given how many tanks? 280 tanks. There you go. Heavy tanks. Jump in the tanks. Ride to Berlin. And that's exactly what they're doing. The altar conference. Yeah, why not? Mussolini have been deposed. Running out of building slots everywhere. So I'm just building everywhere. Vichy France pushing in with their tank divisions. One, two, three, four, five vichy french tank divisions what well get this i do not recognize the vichy french government so in my mind it doesn't even exist there you go boom divided italy i do like the mechanics where nations are much easier to capitulate because i think it does get frustrating particularly late game where nations just refuse to fail so it's kind of cool that you can nuke japan and make them cap a bit easier it's kind of cool that uh, italy splinters into a civil war I, I think those mechanics are really 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 cool it'd be kind of cool if there was some on the allied side it might maybe a historical style events that would be kind of sweet oh yeah doctrines i forgot about those I'm gonna go on the left path because this gives a bonus 
to break through if we go for a light armored recon. Do we have that? We don't have any recon on this. Oh, no, we do. We have the rangers, and rangers are just too good. But alternatively, if we had light armored recon, we gain an extra 40 breakthrough. That's actually pretty big. But not for now, because I like the mountaineer bonus. Hey, finally connected the front lines up. Sicily has been joined with the mainland. Reinstate the Dutch. And the Dutch, when they occupied until the very, very last day of the war, I think the Allies did try everything they could to try and take out Germany and take Berlin before the Soviets arrived. I just don't think they were able to. Sneaking the victory points here, just trying to grab all the supply depots. So little resistance. I guess I could sneak the victory points here. So Vienna, usually Hamburg is another one as well. Then normally they will cap. Germany has 83% towards surrender limit. So if you're starting to break a river here, what you do is just wrap around the back and then attack from a direction that doesn't have the river. The other Italy has capped. And then we attack from another angle here. And that should break Hamburg. Yeah, there we go. Was it the Cass? Was it the Super Hardness tank division? I mean, I think all of the above, I think. Pop. Hungary is left. We're going to cancel all the front lines and make a new one with the Field Marshal right here. And just go straight. And I'll control B to get them to the front line quick. Press it a few times sometimes just to remember if I'm toggling it on or off. I always forget. I don't even know what the consequence is when a nation wants to be reinstated again after being in exile. If you say no, what it even matters. I don't even know what it means because if, at the end of the day, if you cap them and it's over the war, it makes a difference anyway. It's because I've agreed to the Yalta conference. I don't think it's going to make much difference. So do I just take Africa? Yeah, I want like Mediterranean control. I'm going to take parts of France too because that makes perfect sense. Now, the British colonial empire is it seems to be expanding. I'm going to take Norway too, because once again, that makes perfect sense in the grand scale of how World War II went. I'll we'll take Vichy France as well and take the French Navy. Like everyone's Navy. It doesn't make any sense. I'll do it anyway. The AI never wants to grab navies in peace conferences. I always notice that. This is the one time I actually do need a big navy because I'm going to take on the Japanese. What are these borders? And why are you still in power? And what happened to Italy? The Vatican? I've never even seen that before. And they're communist. <laughs> okay. The borders used to be really pretty, and then this happens. Okay, here we go. Death Sack Navy. 300 ships. I've just realized I've got no planes on the carriers. I don't need them. I don't care. The carriers are just going to be like sponges of damage while the battleships do all the damage. And off to the Pacific we go. Naval invasion. Classic feedback game in landing location. Let the convoy raiding commence. And there you go, the final mechanized. The one that has all the hardness. But at the moment, I'm so far behind on my equipment, I can't even afford it. But we'll come to it eventually. I spy with my little eye something happening in Japan. Once again, assigning the spy just so I get intel. When I do a naval invasion, I'll not have much of a penalty. I don't think I'll have any penalty, actually. I'll probably have an attack advantage. Okay, naval invasion time. Naval invasion support. And off you go. Yep, and we can do this. Look at the escort, 210 ships. Okay, this is going to be a mighty fine naval invasion. They're only going to get me here is if they're covering all their coasts and they never do in the south. Oh, mistakes have been made. And that is pretty much done. So just assigning their army, just microing them. There's always key points in, in Japan you need to care about. For some reason, the front lines always need to split around here. So you need to redraw the front lines. It happens every single game. And also be careful of these straits here because they can get you can get encircled really easily if you're not careful. But if you capture a bunch of ports in the south and capture at least one of these two of these islands, you're pretty much done. And it's done, GG. You just micro a little bit as you wave around the front line. And as you can see, they're not holding back at the slightest. We've got so much softer and so much hardness. We've got the full armor bonus as well. We're doing all the damage. I love making this division, but if you want to break somewhere like Italy or break a strait or do a naval invasion, it just ain't going to work. You know what? I'm going to take the navy. We haven't got enough victory points this, so I'm going to have to click away a few of them. I'll wait a little bit. Take a few. Take a few. Pass. A contribution to this war is really small, so I'm able to take a great deal, but I managed to yoink a few ships. There you go. And then we're done. Peace in our time. Chamberlain was right all, all along. Annex. What did I annex? Oh, Malaya. <laughs> okay. I was going to ax uh, the Raj, but they've gained a little bit more autonomy from me. I think they've got uh, Gandhi. Yeah, they have. It's been a rocky ride, this one, guys. But you're starting to see why I had to go for that infantry Space Marines template. Because it is just universally effective, particularly invading Italy, which is a difficult terrain to break in the long run. However, you can see the power that this division has when it does its landings. And the amount of potential damage it can do. So, it's capable of doing a lot of damage. However, you've got to be very careful where you use them. And if you do lose those divisions to a naval invasion or in circumvent over a run, it can be very painful, which nearly happened here due to supply problems, hence the reason why I bought so many ports. And it also nearly happened here too, 
And it did happen a little bit here too. All the naval invasions have stacked up and they've been very painful. Guys, if you like this kind of videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. I found this campaign quite a bit of a drag, actually. I think we're going to go back to Space Marines Infantry again. And if you want YouTube to follow what you like and give you more you enjoy, don't forget to like and subscribe and YouTube will provide you with more of that content. And if you like these videos, you might like this one on screen right now. Give this one a click. I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.